If you want to mingle, here comes Adam Mingle. It's time for Mingle with Mingle. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Yes, it is the season two premiere of Mingle with Mingle. Super excited that we got this show, I guess you could say, renewed for another season. We have a very special guest, and joining me is my grandpa, Opa, is what they call it in German, Germany. Um, but yeah, our whole life, we've called you Opa, the German word for grandpa. Bud Engel, you are here. Yes, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for, for joining me. So, Bud, oh, excuse me, Opa, uh, <laughs> I know you as Opa, people know you as Bud, um, but the viewers don't know you. So, so tell the viewers a little bit about you. Well, uh, we're from California, I uh, grew up in California, but actually, my parents moved out from Oklahoma during the Grapes of Wrath era and uh, lived in uh, near Bakersfield. Right. And my dad worked in the oil fields uh, around Taft. And then I grew up in Shafter and went through elementary school and high school and Bakersfield College and then Long Beach State. Uh, tell the folks about Shafter. What what does Shafter look like? Well, Shafter was known for potatoes and cotton, and we would all work in the fields during the summer and in the sheds, and, and that would be our summer work during high school. Mm -hmm. And then in college, I worked for a manufacturing company. We built cotton trailers and did a lot of uh, blacksmithing and uh, farm equipment repair and that type of thing all over california or no just no 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 just locally in like the because shafter's in the central valley right yeah it's near bakersfield so in the southern end of the valley okay so where you're at now pleasanton the east we're bay, in the that's east in, bay right. known as the tri-valley right right yeah. i i just have a quick question because yeah. I, I know that there's some people here uh actually they're watching i'm not going to name names but there's some people uh that believe this what do you have to say to the people that believe san francisco San Francisco is part of the Pacific Northwest. No, I just thought it was the Pacific. Yeah, right. I, I, I yeah, wouldn't. Northwest would be Portland or Seattle. Right. That's yeah. The, that's what I would think. But there, there's, there's people that have kind of disagreed with me, and I'm oh, like, oh, okay, man. You so, I mean, you, you like it, right? You, you've been in the same house since what? Right. Uh, since seventy one. Right. Actually. And my dad's lived there and Yeah. The same same old house. Yeah. The legendary well, it was house. New when we bought it. Right. How, so how <laughs> But how we it moved now? from Los Angeles. See your dad and, right. and your uncle were born in Los Angeles when I was teaching in Los Angeles. Inglewood. Ingle well, yeah. I right. taught in southwest Los Angeles at George Washington High School for five years and then moved up to Pleasanton. And Pleasanton was a small community in those days, uh, but has since grown into 75,000 people. Yeah. It's a lot of, like twice the size of July. Oh, yeah. It's definitely, definitely yeah. a change for you guys when you come visit, visit us in Wyoming. Right. That's why I wore the shirt yeah. today. Yeah, the, the Bighorn Mountains. It's yeah. a great place. So you were, all right, I'm, I'm trying to think here. Uh, yeah, you taught high school drafting, right? Tell, Correct. Tell the kids out there that who don't know what drafting is, what that is. Well, drafting on the board is with a T-square and triangle, uh, hand lettering with block lettering. Uh, mechanical drawing is mm -hmm. another name for it. But that's when it was done by hand. And uh, architecture also right. when we draw floor plans and elevations and things like that. Now... Most everything is done on the computer, so it's computer-aided drafting with software, just like uh, in the word processing, it would be like uh, Microsoft Word, okay. or that type of thing. Uh, where did you get the urge to uh, become a drafting teacher? Well, actually, I started out as a music major. Yeah, tuba. Tuba. Right. Yes. That's what got me to Long Beach State, actually. But I changed my major uh, when uh, uh, one of my good friends that I grew up with had already graduated. And we always used to draw when we were little kids. And he said, why don't you take a drafting class and see if you might like it? And so I did. And 
I did well in the class and I had to go to a different advisor to take some of the other classes like wood shop and metal shop and that sort of thing. So when I got to Long Beach, I auditioned for the music department and the band and uh, made the audition, but I was also part of the department in industrial arts. So I have a degree in industrial arts and a minor in music. So obviously, you know, people who know you know that you were a big time tuba player back then. <laughs> tell, tell the folks about your, your, your uh, tuba playing adventures. Well, I, in my senior year in high school, I played in the Rose Parade with a group uh, called the Robin Hood Band. And uh, they, it was kind of like the precursor to the McDonald's Band where oh, yeah, they yeah. auditioned two students from every state and so I was one of the two from California, and we stayed there for a week for a rehearsal, did the parade, went to Disneyland, and then we left and I came back home. It was for the Rose Parade, so do, uh, were you able to go to the Rose Bowl, the game? Yes, we went to the game afterward. Who it played? Was, what? Oh, Wisconsin and Washington. What, what year was that? 60, 1960. Do you remember who won? Yeah. Who? Washington. Okay. All right. The Husky. Yeah, I still have a piece. In those days, they had wood goalposts. Oh, they. So. And we stormed the field, and I, I still have a piece of the goalpost. Really? In the, wow. Yeah, in my garage. You. So you. I'll you, have to show it to you. You and your band. Was it your whole band, or just maybe parts of your no, band? No, the whole band went. The whole band. That was stormed part of the, the package deal. Right. Right. No, yeah. but I mean, the whole band stormed the field. Oh, I don't in, remember the that. Everybody. In those days, that's what you did. Right, right. But of course, now they have the metal goalposts, so you can't. Yeah, definitely, definitely can't, can't do that. You can't take them down anymore. Or have souvenirs. Right. So you spent a lot of time in Southern California before you moved uh, to the Bay. But but right. tell the folks about your your time. I know you said your first job was uh, you were paper delivery boy in sixth grade, but yeah. you spent a lot of time working at Disneyland. Yes, when I was in college. Uh, well, my senior year, I worked in food service at the college. And then uh, as I was graduating, uh, I was applying for different jobs and uh, I was able to get on at Disneyland in mm -hmm. food service. In fact, uh, they actually offered me a job to move to Florida to for open up Disney World. Mm. But I was ready to teach yeah. and we were just married. so. We didn't want to move to Florida. But so uh, at Disneyland, you were flipping burgers, right? Yeah. How was, how, how was that? I mean, that must have been pretty crazy. Well, yeah. On a day when we had 50,000 in the park, Jeez. we were busy. Yeah. Were you just, were you just back there fl Sometimes flipping hamburgers? Sometimes we'd have or what? 60 burgers on the grill at the same time. It'd take two of us to do the grill because Jeez. by the time we got all the hamburgers right. on the grill, the first ones needed to be flipped. Otherwise, they'd burn. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, we were really, one guy would do nothing but put them in the little bags. Right. And, uh, the girls would be out front taking the orders. Yeah. I, I know you, you worked there, and we've spent some time in Disneyland, even for your 70th birthday. But what, uh, uh, do you have a favorite ride at Disneyland? For, from from all the years, from when you well the Matterhorn. There. Oh yeah, and what we used to do, uh, we weren't supposed to do it, but uh, on the Matterhorn before the park opened, if you got two big guys on a car behind two small guys, yeah, and you started the ride, oh, the guys in the back, the big guys would go past the the. Uh, specified distance oh, between yeah. the cars yeah. and it shut down the whole ride Jeez. so then you have to circulate the whole cars around again to get the sequence right back because you can't have a car behind running into a car in the front wait you know? so you guys would purposely try to shut down the ride or well yeah but that was just a one-time that thing. was just I a one-time thing yeah yeah i was it was the other guys doing it i was <laughs> It was. Are you sure about that? Maybe. Yeah. Well. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So you spent time at Amador Valley High School teaching drafting for thirty years. 
Yeah. Now, my dad's always told me about the story, the, the infamous story is a, you're a P, PA announcer. Oh, when I did, yes. One of my extra duty assignments, I was a press box announcer for the football games. Yeah. And so every Friday night, I would do my routine before right. the games and and uh, we had a thing I'd always yell out, let's all stand for the kickoff when the ball. In fact, uh, one of the years, Brandon Crawford, who plays for the Giants mm -hmm. now, he went to Foothill High School, which was our rival high school. And he was a senior at Foothill High one year when I was in the press right, box. Right. So he was quarterback. So I would call his number and That's pretty you cool. know, that type of thing. And Were there... Yeah. Uh, I know Crawford. Uh, were there any other like notable players now that 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 you might have been? Not announced? really. Well, we had a. I can't remember them by name, but we did have a, a few guys uh, that went eventually even on to the pros. Yeah. Later on. Yeah. Uh, in football. Right. Right. Yeah, we had our high school is known as the school of champions because, one year our. Teams won every championship oh, wow. in every sport. Yeah, so we became known as a school of champions. All right, but 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 tell the viewers. So my dad, he tells a story that you're you're he you're at the football. Stories, yeah, though. you're at the fo your football game. <laughs> oh, and the referee says, oh, that if you game. if you say one more thing, I'll give you a 15 yard penalty. <laughs> yes, yes, and, it was a preseason yeah. game, and the refs were just being nitpicky about every little flinch or whatever. Five yards this way, the other team would do something. Five yards that way. Finally, I, you know, I was just getting tired of it, and uh, I said, you know, if these refs don't let the boys play ball, we'll be here all night. Well, the vice principal came running up the stands and said, but if you don't quit saying those things, you're going to get a 15-yard penalty <laughs> against you. Yeah. So, See, uh, I'm I'm glad I heard your story because. Oh, Throwing up my dad my, probably my, embellished. Well, the, the way bit. the way he does it, he's like, he's like the referee. Maybe on the microphone or whatever, the referee's like, "All right, if you say one more thing, I'll give you a 15-yard penalty." And then the way he said it, he, you, you apparently, after one more thing into the microphone, you are one more thing, and then he's like, "All right, that's it." He he drew the flag. That no, that's we, what he said. Yeah. Well, no, no, I didn't go that far. No, but. I I can definitely tell when when we're watching football, you you say some things on the TV like what like <laughs> like good night, yeah. right? What? Well, yeah. I mean, if there's some stupid play or somebody uh, commits a foul for some reason, well, you know. Yeah. It's just like Omar doesn't like me to talk to other drivers. <laughs> oh yeah, you're like you're like buddy. Come on, guy, put on your blinkers so I know what direction you're going. Yeah, you know? come on, buddy. <laughs> uh, so last night we drove past a baseball stadium. You you yeah. like baseball? Uh, I remember you were like you saw that like brand brand new. You're like good night. That uh, like oh, Bray's pretty nice, right? Oh yeah. The yeah, the stadium. Could, could, is that something you, you could, like, ever imagine playing at? Because I know – wait, I know you played football. Is yeah, it, Did I you ever play baseball? baseball? Yeah. I know because you would always say you threw it around the horn, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I played right field. Yeah. I didn't play infield. Okay. But, no, the, you, should, you, you should come back in the spring to, to come no, to a baseball we'll have game. To. Yeah. Super cool. What what else, Opa? What else do you want to talk about? This is this is your time. You you can say anything you want. Well, no, I always enjoyed uh, uh, athletics. Uh, I managed basketball. Right. And in those days, as a manager, we basically took care of everything in the gym, and uh, you know the coach. Right. We had the first aid kit. And For high school. Yeah, for high school. Do you have a like a crazy manager story? Well, all right, t tell it. I didn't grow up with a lot of money, so yeah. one game we were going away and we were eating at a, a kind of like a buffet style restaurant. Right. And the coach hands me a hundred dollar bill and said, "Go pay the bill." Well, I'd never seen a hundred dollar yeah. bill or 
held a hundred dollars. Right, right. I was afraid somebody was going to take it away from me, yeah. walking over to the cashier, you know. And then, oh, how am I supposed to get the change back and yeah, give it back to the coach, you know? Right. But. Uh, and then you, so you went to no, what? What was what was the time at Long Beach State like? That was because that was. I mean, now it's a huge school, right? Yeah. When when we were there, the school was only ten years old, so. We really didn't have any traditions, anything like that right, here right. at OSU. But now uh, there's 35,000 students there. It's parking structures all over the place. And, is it uh, is it still like a com a commuter campus kind of, or are there? Well, there's probably a couple thousand students living on campus. But it's, it's a lot it's, more than what we were. There's nothing like here, right? No, 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 no. Okay. no it's Southern California, right? Surfer school, <laughs> surfer school, known as the beach. Right, right. They're the baseball team. They're still called the Dirtbags, right? Yeah, they're the Dirtbags. That's crazy. Even though the the when we had football, yeah. uh, we were the Forty ers That's the basketball team. And aren't you, you? You guys are still that, right? Except yeah, for, yeah. Except for the baseball. The Dirtbags were up for some reason yeah. always the Dirtbags. So you're in Stillwater. What uh, What are your first impressions on 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 this town? Well, it's uh, nice. The campus is beautiful. And yeah. The architecture is great. And uh, since uh, that's part of what I taught, I right. enjoy all the... I know yesterday we took you down the hall. You you were, you were, love that pr that old printing press. Oh, yeah. The... Uh, uh, oh, the name skips my mind right now. Platin Press. Okay, that's yeah. That's what it is in the hallway there because probably this building had printing presses in it I'm sure when it was a yeah. true uh when journalism was handset type and, right right oh and the the one thing i was telling everybody about the uppercase and the lowercase oh yeah yeah the capital letters are in the uppercase yeah because they're in the upper case yeah and the little <laughs> letters are in the lower case okay below the cabinet Oh, like, okay, it's, all right. So I, physically, I thought you meant, okay, physically. the upper cape were the big letters. Okay. The I was, capital letters you would put in the upper case because okay. you didn't use very many of them. I was confused because you're like capitals, uppercase, and I'm like thinking in my head like, yeah, they are, right? They're but, but, but you actually letter. mean like physically. They're physically, okay. they were in the upper case. So like up here. You had drawers letters. of fonts. Right. Of the handset type, and you would. You had to learn how to read backwards because wait so they had when to, you printed it, it would flip right over. right right so they they had a drawer of like because now of course on word you can just pick over like oh, 100 yeah, types of 100 fonts. fonts yeah yeah what was your did you have a preferred font times new roman times new roman was all there was yeah because i know here the professor is like make sure your documents are uh times new roman 12 12 type yeah. Double spaced. See, back in those days, unless you yeah. took printing, you wouldn't know what a font was, what really type size was, or anything wow. like that. Wow. Yeah. Because it was all done on a typewriter. Right, right. That, that, that does so make sense. So it was sense. all manually taken care of. You mm -hmm. know, you had to, that was part of the learning process, too. Yeah. So in our major, we had to take at least one class in all the different shop areas like print shop metal shop wood shop auto shop right drafting and i know your favorite now of course is wood shop well yeah i do that in retirement yeah, yeah. that's your what i know i know you like in our house you've made a few like what like shoe shoe cabinets what what's the biggest project you've ever made well i built this uh chicken coop well right, right. and your dad's uh Japanese tea house. Oh yeah, that that too. Yeah, I designed that for him, and we worked together. Wait, you because you, you didn't build it, but you designed no, the blueprint. No, one of the local guys built it. All right. Yeah, I remember that. But Does like with your aunt's kitchen remodel. Oh, with Auntie Amy. Yeah. No, uh, Sherilyn. Oh, okay, Sherilyn. Yeah, Aunt Sherilyn. We redid her kitchen, added right. on, and. Well, I did house plans, right? Remodels. Because I remember when my dad was building that thing, my sisters, and my mom were in Europe, and that that was pretty crazy. Because she came home and she's like, 
She was what upset did you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Opa, is there anything else you, you'd like to add? No, looks like you're doing great here at OSU. Appreciate that. And everybody's proud of you, and the school is great, and you're working with everybody. Yeah, so I love it. I wish I could have done that. Right, right. Well, thanks, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, all right, folks, thank you for watching. We actually have our second episode that will be next week, so keep an eye on for that. Uh, this was a rare occasion. I usually, for I just like to say, for the record, uh, I usually don't know who the guest is. Today I did, but for, for the most part, I show up here. They, they, they don't tell me the guest. So what you see, except for today, what you see on the show is completely 100% unscripted, which is why maybe I stutter, which is why you know, I, I might forget some questions because it is 100% off the rails unscripted. Thank you guys for watching Mingle with Ingle, and we will see you next week. If you want to mingle, here comes Adam Mingle.